welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna do a Q&A session on how I grow my orchids here in New York City. Um, and I get a lot of the same questions often, and um, on Instagram I put a poll up and I got a bunch of questions from you guys, so I'm going to answer them and share any of the most common questions that I get. So let's jump right in. So the first question that I have is, any tips for newbies starting a greenhouse? So because I grow indoors, I can give you tips on how to start an indoor growth space um, in an environment like New York where we have a hot summers and very cold dry winters. Um, I say if you want to start a greenhouse, I would follow a channel that is growing in greenhouses. Um, I will link a couple down below, but Justin's Orchids just set up a greenhouse and he's been talking about the challenges of growing them. So I'll link his channel down below. And um, there's a couple of others like Brad's Greenhouse. So I suggest you check those out, but I can share how you can um, tips for starting an indoor grow space indoors. So I would say that you have to get good lights. Um, there's a lot of LED lights out there. The Barina lights are very popular. I'll link them down below. I use the Orchid Hobbyist lights. They work really well. So I say just you have to plan out your space. If you're gonna have a big collection, consider getting shelves, consider getting lining on the shelves, and um, a really big focus is gonna be on the lighting. That's gonna be very, very important. Um, I'd also consider if, you're, if you have a big collection, think about how you're gonna water it. I expanded my collection pretty quickly and watering became a really big chore. So with orchids, you have to flush them. And I have my orchids in a spare bedroom that way and I have to constantly bring the orchids from that room and bring it to the sink over here. So it's a lot of work when I'm flushing my orchids. So that's something to consider. Keep it near a source of water that you can, you can flush. Um, I have a friend in the Bronx where she has her set up right in the kitchen so she's able to bring everything over to her sink very easily. So that's something that I would keep in mind if you are growing indoors. Favorite Cattleya that stays small? Hmm, I really like my Brasolelio Cattleya Paola Spots. That one stays pretty small and it's very vigorous. It is a Richard Mueller hybrid. Some of those stay small. I did a Richard Mueller um, video here where you could see the hybrids that I really like. Um, and a lot of them stay small. Some of them get bigger, but that depends on what it was crossed with. Um, but I also like my um, Patanera Barana Beauty Barana because that one is pretty compact. It doesn't get too big. I recently divided it as well. You could see it here. It's not very big. It's very fragrant, very easy to grow. So those are two of my favorite smaller compact Cattleyas. So the next question is, how do you care for your Dendrobium New Hope Mini? So I would classify this as how do you care for a Dendrobium Orchid as I find the New Hope Mini is you treat it just like any other Dendrobium. So the way that I care for mine is I have mine in semi-hydro. So I have it in LECA in a self-watering pot. I'm gonna be moving it to an organic setup, but I would say to care for it, if you are not growing it in semi-hydro, I would put it in a mix of bark or sphagnum moss, depending on your environment, and make sure that it gets watered as it's approaching dryness or after it dries. You don't wanna leave it dry too long. So you wanna get a clear pot if you're new to growing, see if there's any condensation in the pot. If there's no condensation in the pot, then give it a water. You wanna wa water it thoroughly. Um, you could water it over your sink, let it drain out, that's very important. You never wanna pour water into the pot and let it sit there, it'll kill the roots. And I like to give my Dendrobiums Cattleya level light. So they get bright LED lights. They sit right next to my Cattleyas and they tend to do pretty well, but I would make sure that your um, medium is very well draining. Regardless if it's in semi-hydro, you have air pockets in there, or if it's in organic, you wanna make sure that water is not accumulating in the pot. You wanna make sure it drains and you wanna flush it monthly. Um, Next question is somewhat related. Have you stopped using self-watering pots? I have not stopped using self-watering pots, but I am moving away from semi-hydro. That's the next question. Um, but I am moving some things away from self-watering pots when I move them to organic. But lately I've learned that with self-watering, 
I don't use the organic setups as much because they tend to develop some mold, but I will use them if I have moss in the pot and it's the middle of summer and I'm not available to water. Those are the times where I would use a self-watering pot. Otherwise, I find that I will use the pots because I have so many, but I don't use the self-watering feature in the pot. Next question. Why are you moving away from semi-hydro? So about two years ago, I moved a lot of my collection into semi-hydro. I still have a lot of my collection in that setup. A lot of my cat leos are still doing really well, but I've decided to move away from semi-hydro. And when I'm repotting, I'm taking things out of the setup because I've noticed that after a period of a couple of years, some of my orchids have declined over time. I made a video on my Neo Phoenicia falcata. It did well in semi-hydro initially, so I was very excited about it. It bloomed like four or five times. And then I noticed that all the roots died off. Once the old root system died off, the new root system never adapted. That's not the case with everything. That's the case mostly for Vandas. Vandas aren't really loving it in my environment. Semi-hydro works for some folks in other environments and there's some factors here in my environment and the way that I care for my orchids that I suspect are the reason for the setup not doing so great and primarily it's my lack of flushing the pots. I just don't have the ability to flush the pots as frequently as I'd like so I have a feeling that it just accumulates a lot of salts in there and um, it's not an acidic environment for the roots as well as it should be. So if you use organic, that's more acidic. If you're using LECA, I wanna say that's more neutral because nothing is breaking down in there. You can adjust your pH, but it's not something that I wanna continue using. I find that when I flush my orchids in semi-hydro, I have to use a lot of water. There's a lot of salt in the pots. So I find organic just a bit easier to deal with. I find it more predictable with how my plants are going to act. So I'm moving away from semi-hydro just because I don't like what it's done to some of the orchids. Mostly my species, Cattleyas, have not done great. Mostly my Vandas. All of my Latoria type Dendrobiums have basically died in the setup very suddenly too. So that is why I'm moving away from semi-hydro. Next is, what is your favorite Phalaenopsis species? My favorite fowl species is the Phalaenopsis bellina. It's got an amazing fragrance, smells like lemon, very easy to grow, and the best part of it is that it blooms when it's super young. So you can get a little seedling and within a year you're gonna have blooms. So if you don't have a bellina, highly recommend it. What is your favorite season? I love the fall. Um, and with my collection, I find that I get a lot of blooms with, on my Cattleyas in the fall with the time change. And it's also a lot cooler, a lot more manageable to do my chores in the plant room and that sort of thing. My birthday is also in the fall, so I love when the leaves change. So I would say for my collection and personally, I love the fall, more blooms, really nice. Um, and here in New York, it's great in the fall. What is your favorite dish? I mean, I love pizza. It's delicious. Who doesn't love pizza? Next question is, when are you giving a tour of your mom's orchids? So my mom has a collection of probably about 150 different orchids. Um, those of you who haven't been following my channel that long, my mom has been growing orchids since I was a kid, so I grew up seeing her grow a big collection here. Um, and she's got a really nice collection, and on Instagram sometimes I post pictures of what she has in bloom. Um, but I will aim to do a video in the next couple of months um, so you guys could see what her collection looks like. It's really nice. She grows um, not only orchids, but she grows African violets. She grows philodendrons, all kinds of plants. She grows all kinds of things. Um, and she's been getting into Hoya because of me. So <laughs> she's got a really nice collection. She also uses um, Ikea greenhouse type setups. Um, so she's got a really nice collection of mini orchids. It's really beautiful. So I will 
In the next couple of months, I will do a video once I'm able to. What genus has given you the most trouble to this day? So I would say that the one that struggled the most for me right away was a Miltoniopsis. So three years ago, I got, I ordered a box from Carmela Orchids and they sent me a Miltoniopsis orchid. And that orchid was, it was great. It bloomed twice, beautiful, but in the summer, it just kept dying off. Like bulbs just kept falling and I just felt sad. I've never seen an orchid just hate the temperature so much. Um, but it makes sense, it's a cool grower. Um, here we do have cooler temperatures, but in the summer it's a struggle to keep everything cool. And um, the apartment gets hot, especially in the window. I would keep it on an east facing window. So I gave that plant away um, and I haven't looked back. So <laughs> I would say Miltoniopsis is the toughest one for me. And anything that's like a cooler grower, I won't touch just because I know it won't thrive in my environment. So like a Dracula orchid or a Mastivalia, not touching it, not for me. It'll, I don't, maybe one day I will grow them, but I don't really want to put in the effort to set up an environment that's cooler just for those orchids in my apartment. I have too much to deal with, with my hot growers and I'd rather deal with hot to warm growing orchids. Aside from maintaining what you have, what genus or group would you like to see a major improvement? That's a really good question. So I would say my Oncidiums. So I find Oncidiums very easy to grow. However, um, I do have a few orchids in the Oncidium family like um, Miltonias and um, some other hybrids where I've noticed that some of the bulbs rot a little bit. Maybe I overwater sometimes. That's on me. Um, and the root systems are very vigorous, so repotting them can be a little tedious and painful. So I would say that I would like some more improvement on my Oncidium type orchids. They bloom and they're great, but just because I haven't been able to maintain them as much as I'd like. And when I say maintain, I haven't been keeping up with repotting as much as I'd like, so I would like to see some improvement there. I would also like to do better with my Bulbophyllum orchids. They don't bloom super often and the root systems are very shallow, so you kind of have to like um, put them in like a shallow pot, water a little bit more frequently. I would like to get into some more Bulbophyllums as well, but because I have two, they don't bloom super often. I've held back, so I want to improve those before I could expand into some of the others. The ones that have beautiful flowers but smell bad, <laughs> like the lovely Elizabeth, for example, or the Fascinator. Um, so I would say my Oncidiums and my Bulbophyllum orchids. Thank you guys so much for the questions. That is all I have for this week. If you guys have any other questions, let me know down below. I haven't done one of these videos in about a year. So if you guys want another Q&A video, let me know in the next one I'll do live. And I will see you in the next video. Bye everyone.